from Cornwall to Birmingham and Johnston and Bexhill. Here's Ruben Spire on the radio. Um, hello to um, Ruth Kelly. How are you today? Hello, I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So, can you tell me how long have you been a singer songwriter for? Oh, well, I've been a singer all of my life since I was about nine years old. Um, I delved into songwriting at school, but then I really went for it when I turned 30. It was like a big milestone for me and something that I was scared of doing, um, terrified to be honest. But then I just went for it full force. So for about five to six years strong now, yeah. So um, what was it like going to the uh, recording studio when you first went there? So I first went to a recording studio when I was about properly, when I was like 29. I went on a songwriting camp in Thailand Um and it was just fascinated me, like everything that everybody does. You don't realise how much hard work goes in behind the scenes. Um, so I was doing stuff for myself. I was doing it for other people as well, like backing vocals and sort of learning the different programmes they use. Um, it was the most surreal, amazing experience. And then since then, my confidence obviously is just been growing i've been practicing and the studio is one of my favorite places yeah so um can you tell me more about your debut single called um back in 2019 called um we found love we found love so that's actually a cover um that one is a cover of rihanna um we found love and i redid that one actually with a producer that i met from Thailand. I always wanted to remake a song so that it was different from the original, but one that people could relate to. Maybe go on my profile, listen to that, and then listen to some of mine as well. So, uh, um, was where did you get your uh, inspiration from writing music? Oh gosh, um, well. My dad likes writing lyrics. My dad um, is a songwriter. He's dead into his music. So I think he passed that on through the family because my sister's a songwriter as well. And she's amazing. So it's been, that's kind of where it started. And then obviously I love music and I have lots of different artists that inspire my music. So that's where it started really. Um, and then as time's gone through, I definitely think that I do a lot more writing now from the heart. I've learned different techniques. So, you know, I feel like it's just one of them things which is nice to see a progress and to watch your journey grow. Like that, that's the part that I enjoy about songwriting. Um, sometimes there's no inspiration. My best inspiration is when I'm driving in the car. It seems to all just come to my head. Um, and I feel like I write so many different bangers when I'm in the car and then forget them. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just it's just finding the right time and place for me. Um, and then it all comes together. So, uh, can you tell you about um, fantasy? Yeah, fantasy is actually my highest dream song. I released that in lockdown. Um, and I feel like to date... That was one of my most successful releases because everybody had the time on their hands to listen, to support. I did my own little independent chat where got everyone involved because people were obviously at home and couldn't go anywhere. Um, and it grew and grew from there. So I feel like that fantasy is one of the songs that I'm really proud of. Um, and I worked with a producer called Reese Fletcher on that song and just loved it. It was so cool. So it must have been pretty hard to not get any gigs during that time period. Yeah, really hard. But for me, it was actually, you know, everybody's different. But for me, it was a blessing um, because... I was kind of starting out with the journey of doing my own songs, 
finding the confidence. So I was practicing a lot of my show and things while I was at home. So for me personally, lockdown was really good for that because it kind of really spurred me on to think, you know, life is so short. Once this is over, I'm really going to go for it. And that's exactly what I've done. So I feel like I turned it into a positive um, but I do understand, obviously, that for a lot of musicians who were already dead rooted into that, like it was really hard for them. Um, and obviously it was hard for me in different ways. But for my music, it actually really helped me. It really helped my um, journey grow from there, really. So uh, can you tell me more about um, I Don't Have You? Yeah, I Don't Have You. Um so this song is actually dedicated to my friend's daughter, Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea Blue, she lost her life um, three years ago. And this song is, well, unfortunately, she lost her life to suicide. So when I was writing this song, I was personally in a not very good place, not, not a very good mental state. Um, and the lyrics are really deep and they reflect that. And when we were bringing the song out, I wanted to do something to help them, um, to reach out to other people. And it was just the right thing to do. And it will always be Chelsea's song. So forever, this song will be to get dedicated to her and anybody out there struggling with um, their mental health, eating disorders. Um, my friend, Steve Blackford, he does so much stuff for charity. And I just wanted to help him because he's been absolutely amazing in helping young people um, through their journey um, because unfortunately he lost his daughter um, through an eating disorder and mental health. So it was a really sad, tough time for everybody. Um, and I'm glad that you asked me the question because I like to always highlight this in any interview that I can or any platform that I can. So uh, can you tell me about, more about uh, Coming Over Tonight? Yep, Coming Over Tonight. Um, so I wrote this song with, well, no, I wrote all the lyrics to this song myself. And then um, I worked with a producer called Imad Sali, who again is amazing. He lives in London. Um, and it was just a lovely experience to work with him. We, I was very inspired by James Arthur's new album at the time. Um, so we referenced the ideas around how he would create a song um, and just went there really with it. And Coming Over Tonight is one of my uplifting, really fun songs. But again, it's about quite a deep subject. You know, I really liked somebody and I didn't know how to express that properly at the time. So that's what Coming Over Tonight is about. So was it like working with uh, different producers? I think it's brilliant to work with different people and I'm collaborating with different people all the time. I think it's extremely important because everybody brings something different to the table. So obviously I, I just want to keep creating different songs with different moods, different emotions. And I think working with different people brings that out of you. Um, but there is obviously in your heart, there's always them people that you work with who you really enjoy working with. So you go back and I have done that with him. Ad. He, he was absolutely fantastic. So, yeah. So uh, continue more about uh, another day. Yeah. So, when I was at uni, I so when I <laughs> so when I was at uni, I had and have a fantastic mentor, um, and her husband is a producer. So my mentor is Melanie Redmond, and her husband is Matt Marsden. Um, they were absolutely amazing and are still amazing with me. Um, so another day was written with Matt himself. And he's worked with Ella Rare, Will Young, lots of different people in the industry. So that was a real pleasure. I've done quite a few songs with him that I'll be bringing out in the future as well. 
Um, but we really delved into the 90s soul, which is where my heart lies. So you've got like Eterno, Christina Aguilera, um, all of them sort of girl groups back in the day. Um, that's where the inspiration for this song came from. And lots more of my songs moving forward as well. Because I sing a lot of Motown and Soul live, then it made sense to me to do that, um, to obviously fit them perfectly into my set when I'm singing them to people, but also be true to myself. And that is soul. Soul is who I am. So And has been played twice at the Coventry City Football Ground um, while they've been in the FA Cup at the minute. So fingers crossed. It's It has bought them luck so far. It might bring them more luck. So what was that like uh, being your, your track that you made um, at the football stadium? Yeah, so they played that one, was it four days ago? And then they played it again at their last match as well. So, kids, tell me more about uh, Me and You, your latest single they just recently brought out. Yeah, Me and You was actually written, like, about two years ago when I first met my beautiful partner, uh, Brett. And when I first started writing it, I wrote it from a place of, oh, my gosh, I think I've found one, but I'm really scared that it's not going to work out. Um, you know, rejection and failure is something that scares me, but not as much now, but it did at the time. Um, and then I realised he is the one and, well, I knew he was the one, but I realised, you know, this is going to stay. So it's kind of like the journey through me and him falling in love, staying together. And like everything we say, we say, oh my God, me and you do that. Or, oh my gosh, me and you. So like, to me, it's our song, but I know so many other people that obviously feel the same about their partner or their friend or their dog, cat, whatever. Like, so it's just about that person that makes you feel like you can be a hundred percent yourself with like completely no flaws. Doesn't matter. Like they're part of who you are. So, yeah, Me and You is a really beautiful song for us and those in love. So, um, who do the grapevine that you might be uh, doing some um, collab with another artist in the near the future? So, uh, um, yeah. So, what's it like to, uh, if you're going to do uh, or working with somebody else? Um, yes. Yeah, so, it's, I'm looking forward to it. Um I am really enjoying the Coventry music scene and i am made lots of great friends, including the wonderful Chrissy Ducks, um, who you interviewed not so long ago. Uh, you've got Christopher Clark, um, so many Jim Thomason, like so and his son Zach. You've got so many people who've actually just inspired me as an independent artist and they've made me just believe in myself more as well. So I believe that like working with other people in the area will bring the area up, will bring it up in Coventry and we can all celebrate each other and each other's talents. I'm very much about that, very much. So I'm really looking forward to working with new people, definitely. I've just started working at a Beatus a studio, which is just near Kenilworth. Um, and we've started on a 60s tune. So that's cool. That's with a guy called John. Um, I'm also collaborating with Roger Plays um, and we're going to do a dance track. So this is what I'm saying, like work with all these different people is bringing out like a different side of me each time. Fun side, sad side, sassy side, sexy side, like all of them things just by working with different people. Um, I write most of the lyrics myself because the stories are obviously, you know, coming from the heart. But I've started to write from different directions now and about different people, different subjects. And I think that's come from working with different um, collaborators and definitely people around the local area. Coventry's brilliant. It's been brilliant. So uh, 
Have you got any uh, up and coming gigs coming up soon? <laughs> I've got lots of gigs coming up soon. Um, so this weekend, which when this goes out, they'll have probably already happened and been amazing. But I've got the Sports Tech Club in Coventry. Uh, that was from Tyrone Hutchinson. Um, so I'm really grateful to him for booking me for that one. On Sunday, I'm back at the Headstocks, which is a little micro pub in the middle of nowhere um, in a place called Pinkston. And the people in there are so cool. So I'm really happy to be booked there as well. And then the week after, I am at the Woodville Box in Swadleycote. That's a new booking, but fingers crossed for that one. Um, so when this comes out, I think that's on the Sunday, the 31st of March. But yeah. So, uh, I've got lots of I have so many. <laughs> I do post them all online, though, and I do keep people up to date as much as I can with where I'm going and what I'm doing. So, yeah. So um, what's it like being an um, independent artist for you? Um, oh, my gosh. Right, so firstly... <laughs> It's a dream. It's an absolute dream. It's always been my dream. And I can honestly wake up every day and say that, like, I'm so excited. I'm so happy and I love it. But it's really hard work. Like, it's it just gets harder and harder as the journey goes along because you are your own boss. You learn so many different things, which I'm grateful for. But it is incredibly hard to keep on top of everything um especially when you're like me and i'm really like dizzy and all over the place but i'm getting better um and i've got my lovely partner who helps me and the band as well so we're growing as a band lots of changes coming in the band um which again you know you don't prepare yourself for but you just have to like you have to just get on with it. But I have to say, like, if I was to tell you everything that an independent artist does now, we would be, like, here all night. It's so many. Like, I literally respect every single independent artist out there. Seriously. It's so, so rewarding, though. So have you got a dream to play at a, a venue that you haven't played before yet? Oh. You know what? Like, yeah, I do. I would love to play any amazing venue, to be honest. Like, I don't have this huge dream of a particular venue because for me, I just think what's for me will come and what isn't won't. I'm working hard. I'm pushing myself out there. I'm doing all the right things. So... I'm just excited for whatever's next. Like, I would really like to support genres and artists that I love. I think that would be a moment for me where I'm like, wow, this is incredible because that's what I dreamed of as a little girl. So that's all I ever thought about. Um, and little things like that. You know, you don't always see progress. Like, you, you just don't. So I think that would be really nice, I think, um, to support, like, the sugar babes or there's so many eternal people like that it would be it would be really cool for me but i think just the festivals are always amazing but you know what like i had a gig the other week and it was in walston it was just that pub down down in walston really nice pub um the half moon and i had one of the best days of my life so it doesn't always have to be and i know that like, yes, it would be fantastic to get a big venue and yes, it'd be great, but I love what I'm doing and I just have to keep reminding myself that. So uh, finally, can you tell me listeners, where can I find you on your social media? <laughs> yeah. So Ruth Kelly Music, I am on everything pretty much, like mainly Instagram, um, mainly TikTok, Facebook, um, and then there's obviously my music platforms, Spotify, YouTube, these are like all of the main ones. Um, but I reckon if like people just write Ruth Kelly music in, I'm sure they'll find something. Um, and if not, they can always message me, no worries. And I'll, and I'll help direct them to my music. 
that, that would be a pleasure. <laughs> um, thank you for letting me chat to you today. Pardon? So thank you for letting me chat to you today. Oh, no worries at all. Thank you so much. Thank enjoy, you. Enjoy the rest of your day. And you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.